We know that there is a vaccine shortage, not just in India, but across the world, especially in the poorer countries. We know that the developed and the middle income countries are doing much better in the inoculation campaigns against the novel coronavirus. Till April 21, 2021, around 0.93 billion doses have been administered against the novel coronavirus. These doses were received by 0.51 billion people. But according to the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Research Center, only 0.21 billion people have been completely vaccinated. This is less than 2.73% of the global population. Vaccination seems to be the next big hurdle that we are trying to cross in our fight against COVID-19. Although more than a dozen of different vaccines have been created to fight this pandemic, distributing them equitably and to everyone on the planet seems to have become the biggest challenge. Now the WHO has developed a framework for production and distribution of vaccines. But the developed countries and their vaccine manufacturers, the ones responsible for developing these vaccines, are against joining this initiative. Try a minute cough and cold medicine because you love your kids, because you trust your doctor. Before we explain the current situation, let us go back to the 1980s when neoliberalism began to spread across the world. Private enterprise and the open markets became the economic buzzwords, while governments reduced their roles as regulators. This also meant that the healthcare sector, especially in the US, also started to play according to the free market rules, relying heavily on intellectual property rights or IPRs to guard their products. At a very simple level, this meant life-saving drugs came with a price tag and sometimes these prices were very high. And because of IPR, these formulations could never be shared no matter how desperate the situation was, just like the situation we find ourselves in today. And this has made it very difficult for multilateral organizations like the WHO to operate and formulate a global plan to contain the current pandemic. Now let us cut to 2020 to a time when the world was introduced to lockdowns. In May 2020, the WHO created a COVID-19 technology access pool to allow companies to share their knowledge with manufacturers from the developing countries. But guess what? Not even a single company signed up for it. Now Pascal Sorio, the chief executive of AstraZeneca argued, saying that IP is a fundamental part of our industry and if you don't protect IP, then essentially there is no incentive for anyone to innovate. But such claims by the industry are ludicrous as more than a dozen of these COVID-19 vaccines that are currently in the market have drawn heavily on public funding for their development. Let me give you an example. The Moderna vaccine also known as mRNA1273 was developed at a publicly funded university lab. In February, the company declared that it will earn 18.5 billion US dollars from the vaccine this year. Even the AZD-122, the most popular vaccine in the market right now, was developed at the Oxford University and was intended to be used freely by all. But after Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recommended, the university gave the vaccine's marketing rights to the British-Swedish company AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca then signed a contract with the Serum Institute of India to manufacture and market a vaccine as Covishield. So therefore the point that I'm trying to make is that if you have the money, you get your vaccine. Wealthy and middle income countries that can afford the vaccine have booked more than two thirds of the doses that will be produced globally by the end of 2021. This means that the remaining doses that will have to be shared by 92 of the poorest countries in the world and this will barely cover 28% of your population. As of today, there are at least 50 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa which are yet to administer their first shot of COVID-19 vaccine. Till the end of March, China had manufactured most of the COVID-19 vaccines. They were followed by the US, India, the EU and the UK. The US and the UK are only preserving vaccines for domestic consumption, 
while the EU is only sharing vaccines amongst its member states. India and China are the two main countries which are exporting vaccines to the developing world and their share is about 50%. But even here, there's a catch. The Chinese released the first COVID-19 vaccine called Convidicia and China had declared that this vaccine was for the global public good. But as researchers from the Association of International Affairs in Prague point out, only a few countries have received this Chinese vaccine as donations, while the others were offered loans to buy them, pointing to a very strong business motive. And what about India? India has adopted a more subtle route using what is known as vaccine diplomacy. Under the Vaccine Matri Initiative, India has provided over 60 million COVID-19 doses to 70 countries around the world, including the UK, Brazil, Morocco and Bangladesh. Although this has helped India to strengthen domestic ties with many nations, it still faces huge domestic shortages of the vaccine. Currently, India faces a shortfall of about 20 million doses of vaccines every month. And who is to be blamed for this? Of course, the Indian government. On one hand, India has the largest capacity to produce these vaccines. But on the other hand, most of these vaccine manufacturing facilities are government owned and have been left unutilized. It was only recently that one of these facilities called Hafkin Biopharmaceutical Corporation Limited in Mumbai, a government of Maharashtra undertaking, has been roped in to produce Covaxin which has been jointly developed by the Indian Council for Medical Research or ICMR along with Bharat Biotech. There are at least six other public sector vaccine manufacturing institutes that have not been involved in the vaccine manufacturing process. With a little investment, these public institutes could have eased the shortage. But the political will to involve the public enterprise again seems to be missing here. This is again a missed opportunity to re-engage with public health infrastructure and this could hurt the fight against the pandemic not just in India but across the world. India may not be the only country where the public sector has been sidelined but India is also feeling the pinch now. COVID-19 has reminded us that we cannot leave out the health and well-being at the mercy of the private sector. Public health policies play an important role in combating a crisis and it's necessary to pay attention to this sector now and not let the mismanagement become a greater threat than the virus itself.